On our last episode, we bought a NASCAR. And in the next nine days, we're gonna be turning that NASCAR into a drift car, which uh, could be kind of ambitious. Well, Wayne, what do you think? Stupid idea. For as much. Hello there and welcome to today's video. If you didn't catch the last episode, we bought a NASCAR. And we're down here at Vital Fabrication to um, well, see if we can um, get this thing to work. So, over here we have our 1JZ from uh, Verosa and stupidly, with less than two weeks to go, Till our invitational, we've decided to uh, ship it out and um, well, see if it will go into here with um, little to no information about this. So, first things we're gonna crane the engine into here, and I guess we're gonna go from there and problem solve and figure this thing out together, I guess. Really coming to reality right now of what we're actually doing. There's definitely um, no going back now. Okay, so I don't want to use the term the engine fell into here, but Ryan, would you not say it's far off? It's I tell you, it's a lot easier than putting an SR on an MX-5. <laughs> so we've um, dropped in, had a look around and everything, and um, we were considering making it a rear sump because rear sumps come standard on 1Js and 2Js and it'd be easy to transfer over. But I think we can actually make it work. Okay, so the engine mounts, which are here, as you can see, we're gonna cut them off there and move them a little further up so it's not going to hit the sump and give the engine a little more clearance to come down there. So the sump's pretty much gonna be lying there. Realistically, if we were to put the rear sump on, you would get it down another three inches or so, but realistically, this is not gonna be the pinnacle of performance and we have such a short time frame, and we can make this work and literally, what's, a, what's three inches? Okay, so before we go any further, we need to kind of get measurements for the things that are going to take a few days to a week to come or be custom made. So the first thing being the prop. Now this is a um, this is a big ask for this to be the right size, but everything's kind of lining up okay. So you would never actually know how bad it's going to be. I say that's well able for the power that we're going to be running anyway. <laughs> seeing as this was the original prop, which is. Honestly, about half the diameter. That'll work. We just have to change the end. You are <laughs> actually having a laugh. Like, I don't know how this is actually coming together so well. This is... What are the chances of that? It's for the fabrication, baby. <laughs> Bringing a bit of luck to us, finally. Okay, so Ryan's figured out the engine mount situation in quite a simple way, actually. It's a lot more simple than we thought. It's handy because everything's like a steel tube or something, you know? So there's a bar kind of somewhere, everywhere that you can kind of go to. So we're going to do like a plate. we do a little plate there. And then we'll do another side gusset plate on it. And uh, just weld it onto the leg with some decent thick stuff. And then the gearbox mount's even easier. That's already got like a mount. So we're just going to make like a tube mount here and a tube mount here. We'll join a piece of tube from one side to the other. And then we'll make a plate off it. Then onto the standard gearbox mount. So still keeping the rubber mounted. So we're just pretty much utilizing all the standard stuff, but just making different mountain places for yeah, that. Trying to use everything again. Like we even think we can still use the same downpipe and exhaust off the Verosa. 
So we're just going to use the same downpipe, same exhaust that we've already fabricated for the car months ago. And then we're just going to turn it and send it out the side of it. So. I think this is the first time we haven't lied to you. Mm. Because... You didn't, we, I, I said you didn't that I, know it was going to be this easy. No, but <laughs> I told you it wouldn't be that hard. And I think this is the first time it's actually not been that hard. Probably. Usually when you say it's not going to be that hard, it's usually really hard. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to lie. That Usually I do lie to him, but I think on this occasion, we, well, I mean, we're not out of the woods yet, but... Would you keep talking like this? You keep, I'm telling you we're going to run into something. Just go use your plasma cut. You got a plasma cut and he's very excited to use it. <laughs> Look, I he's, am. I am. <laughs> Okay, so the engine mounts are done. So next up is the gearbox. So is that just going in then you're gonna get some plate on that side and just weld it to it? Pretty much. As simple as that. So there we go, one, one Jay-Z mounted in a NASCAR, and Ryan, we, we started this at 10 o'clock, so seven and a half hours. Yeah, it's not record time, but like, it's pretty weak. I'm fairly sure this is record time for one Jay in a NASCAR. Has there ever been that time? <laughs> I was gonna say, there's not, there's not many times around for that. So step one, complete. Okay, so we're trying to figure out a plan for the radiator and the intercooler, obviously. They are not mounted up, they're roughly put in and figuring out how we can get the pipe work and everything because, as surprisingly, it's a little bit different to a Verosa. This is kind of the figuring out for what we're going to plow into tomorrow. So we're putting the exhaust on and we're going to see where that lines us up for how much of an exhaust we actually have to make for this. There is absolutely no issues with clearance on this side then anyways. So the plan with the exhaust is to kind of run through the standard way that it'd be ran up the side. Right, so as much as we would like to keep this chair, it is far from practical because you can't see out that side and your arms are wedged in between here and you can't really handbrake if I'm going to be honest with you. So for now the chair is out and there is a whole lot of mess under here. We have what I can imagine, ooh hang on a second, what have we got here? Got some American coinage. No, we've got, no way, is that 10 mil? mils? What? 11 mil. That's pretty much the American 10 mil, isn't it? Hmm, craftsman, made in the eight USA. I was really uh, hoping that wasn't one of Ryan's tools that I lost down there. <laughs> what is this? What is that? Oh, it's um, like a moisture thing. Well, I can it's tell. Like I can tell from the rust in here. Not it didn't do a very, very good job. job. <laughs> is that part of the original wrap? What else we got here. I'm not fucking that. Why is that a carpet? Some things you just don't want to peel back. It's a fire blanket thing. I think it's 
could need a hoover at some stage. Right, so I say putting a, well actually, Ryan's not sure if a bucket seat will actually fit through the window, so we may have to uh, get inventive and maybe put it through the front window because it's perspex and we get it out. The passenger seat on the other hand is the bigger issue because, well we have, <laughs> we have a few bars in the way. So as you can see the bars have been taken away and a bucket seat is in and I can tell you it is a hell of a lot more comfortable. There's loads of leg room now. The steering wheel's further away, it's still a little bit close but I think there's some adjustment down there so we can raise it up again. This is never going to be an ideal seat in position but um, we just want it as good as possible and right now we are a hell of a lot better and more comfortable. Just a little less NASCAR and more drift car now. So we'll try to raise this up and see where we land. Okay, so we just took the bolt out of there and we've just found it's completely adjustable. So we should actually be able to get a perfect seat in position now, which is great so we can keep the wheels so it's still a bit NASCAR. You all right there, Ryan? I'm in a lovely galaxy. It's his favorite chocolate. A Mars bar for starving up. Okay, Craig has come to join the, all the fun because we need to get this car for wiring in about four hours. So it's all hands on deck. Got the seats from the low brain car, which aren't the best condition, but then again, this car has no windows and you have to stand on the seats to get in. So it'd be pointless putting new seats in there. Every drift car needs a handbrake. So we have handbrake here and I've made a little Template. Also, I just need to replicate this into steel and then weld it on there. I'm not the best welder, I'm not the best person at making metal stuff, but I'm just gonna give it a go and see how it turns out. Right, so as far as an interior goes, I think we are done. The steering wheel is, well, I mean, not fantastic, but it's a hell of a lot better than it was before, as you can move your knees. The handbrake is in a handbrake position and the gear knob is in a gear stick position. I'm going to put a plate there to tidy up the interior. The handbrake solid mounted. Like we're not too far away. I think the interior is done. We've got a passenger seat in obviously. So we can hopefully take some passenger spins. Maybe get a bit ahead of ourselves if it works. This is slowly becoming a thing I think. Right, so whilst we were messing around in the inside of the car, Ryan was, um, well, let's be honest, he pretty much put the whole car together. This is, would you say this is like in-in now? Yeah, it'd be pretty in. Yeah. Like in-in-in. So it's not like fully in, but it's in-in. Well, it's fucking out. <laughs> <laughs> like this is, so this is like a bit of, um, it, was, it was, surprisingly the pipe work wasn't like the Verosa, so it's kind of had to go out and in and yeah, but you made it work. Yeah, quick budge job. Right, so we're gonna put this in the air, do the exhaust, and I'm fairly sure it's on for the next journey. Just about. Not sure, I, I still can't tell if Craig's excited about this project or not. But you have to take that to Nice safety squint there. You know we're in a bit of a hurry when the safety squint's coming out. Ryan, your ramp is free again. A solid high five there. An ambitious few days. You thought it was going to be very ambitious. We've actually done everything that we said that you said that you couldn't do. We started at 10 yesterday. We finished about like 6. That, that's not too bad. Went around 6 o'clock yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and then, what, we had from 9 this morning to what, half 5? Five? 
I think that's an, an incredible effort and I think without that effort I don't think there's a chance we'd be getting this project done for the Invitational. So thank you but we're going to leave you because we're going to the next spot. In your dirty workshop now. It's an excuse to get out of here about cleaning. Okay, so we just arrived down here at DRT Automotive and um, Lloyd, you can't, you can't blame anyone else but yourself for this. You said it was a good idea. <laughs> we're in the airport, we're looking on the marketplace and he said he's up for it. He said if we were putting an SR20 in it, he wouldn't be so keen, but seeing as it was a Jay-Z, he was um, more than willing. <laughs> I think I have all the regrets right now. I'm not gonna lie, step one was I think the easy part of mounting the engine and everything. Step two is this and I think it's um I'm not too sure. Like the photos that oh interesting. It actually fits kinda well. Well think of the room up there. The, the like there was no space <laughs> no problem with room. It's quite interesting, it actually fits quite good. The steering's gonna be so interesting. And it's like it's got like a steering box down here, so it's something you see in an old Land Rover or something. Yeah, we're not too sure what the steering box is about. That's uh that's on stage three. So we need to get past stage two first. Right, so the question, is this doable? Um, I don't know, I'll try it, I'm not sure and see. Oh shoot, we'll give it a go. Can't lie, I think we need more than give it a go. <laughs> we need to give it a good go here. Thanks. Okay, so this has escalated pretty quick. I thought I was just dropping the car down here and it seems like the boys are, well, did you say you'd have this running by the end of this evening? Uh, I'm gonna try. It's not even made it into the workshop yet. So um, I'm just gonna clarify this because Lloyd probably doesn't want to. This is um, a get it going kind of job for this weekend because obviously you're not really gonna make a whole engine loom and chassis loom and everything like that. This is literally gonna be ignition, start and fuel. Is that right? This is like a do as I say, not as I do moment. Absolutely, but whatever, whatever works, works. What's cracking, Andrew? <sighs> Probably something shouldn't be on camera. <laughs> Nothing to see here, Josh. Nothing to see here. You make us make bad life choices, Josh. Well, you can blame Lloyd for this. He was one of the three in the airport that was uh, yes. egging us on. I don't know what he's volunteered us for. I did not give an <laughs> You're normally the rational thing. one. I was just told. You're like... normally the rational one. Now you have us all in it. You, now you're, you cannot say that. Well, I learned did you or did you not say if it's not a SR20 you're in? I probably did to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got a fuel pump onto whatever, an absolute suitcase of a fuel cell and that is not the right way, they're supposed to be that way but um, we don't have enough fitting so we just bolted it onto the source. I guess then we're going to attack the wiring and we um, obviously are running a Link ECU and not that pile of um, ancient shite. So I left the guys here yesterday and I said I'd come down in the morning to see how they're getting on. Are we in positive land? We are. We have a light VCU. We're putting fuel in it and we might have noise soon. That is positive news. We even have the, the first NASCAR with e-throttle working here. I definitely think we need to get one of the NASCAR jugs that you're shoving. Oh yeah, just full send. Like. <laughs> this doesn't have the same effect really, does it? <laughs> no, it's a lot more awkward as well. Like, I don't <laughs> think it was designed to be done that way. <laughs> You've got a return coming in anyways, haven't you? Yep. So the return's been welded in, so obviously NASCAR's done. What's it called that the NASCAR has? A, a dead? Dead head system. It has its carburetor on a lot of them as well, so they don't run the EFA system. But. So it modified old technology to be new technology. Yes. Carburetor delete. <laughs> A red light on the dash, and I think Lloyd's actually put it to the switches in the car so we can actually start it like the NASCAR actually did. Just there's about 17 other switches that don't do anything because the fans, the brakes, and everything like that. Is that a good noise? That's an injector fire, so we can test injector outputs through the ECU just to make sure that the wiring is correct, so um, that's a good sign. 
Just going to quickly uh, move away to let you guys know that obviously Lloyd is doing all this on the Link software because this NASCAR is obviously running a Link ECU which is um, pretty crazy and cool to say if you ask me. And uh, just letting you guys know if you want any of the Link products we do actually stock the whole catalogue on our website so you can get all their products through us. So I'll put a link just down here so you guys can go on and if you need anything we can supply whatever you guys need. I don't know why am I talking so quietly here. I Feels, feels like it needs to be quiet just the other way. Yeah, I can hear something, yeah. yeah. Nearly there. Ooh, it's getting close. So it doesn't seem to be any fuel leaks. So I think this is it. Lloyd, I don't know why there's not any more celebration here. I think there's a, they feel like this is like a celebration time. It's like you've been confident this whole time. It may have been a little bit. I thought it was very ambitious bringing it down, but it seems like since Wednesday, that has to be one of the quickest engine transplants ever in the weirdest car, I would say. We have a 1J in a NASCAR. And what's that, three days? How long did it take you to put an SR20 in an MX-5? About three months. <laughs> Three times. <laughs> I, I, I'm not even exaggerating when I say this car has thrown absolutely zero problems with us. I'm, I'm not sure where the first problem is going to come from, but everything has just worked perfectly. May have just jinxed it there. Well, Wayne, what do you think? Stupid idea. For as much. Right guys, so that is the car out of here. So what an incredible three days I've had so far on the car. We've got the engine in and we've got it running, which is fairly ridiculous seeing as every single part on it is custom, which is just a credit to Vital Publication and DRT Automotive for getting this fitted and wired and running, which is Ah, we couldn't we, we, we couldn't do these builds if it wasn't for these guys. So it's a massive shout out to them but this build is far from over because the engine may be fitted and it may run but we don't know if it will steer we don't have a prop shaft for it we don't have any brakes um so yeah this we're, we're, we're not out of the woods yet we've done stage one a biofabrication we've done stage two a drt automotive and then one stage three which is wayne so i'm going to wrap up this episode here thank you guys very much for watching and we shall catch you guys on the next one where i don't know what's going to happen